all of us behave like the prey we're after. That, of course, also makes us pray for something else. Now the concern of a hunter who knows all this is to stop being prey himself. I again expressed the opinion that his proposition was unattainable. It takes time. You could begin by not eating lunch every single day at 12 o'clock. He looked at me and smiled. His expression was very funny and made me laugh. There are certain animals, however, that are impossible to track. A certain type of deer, for instance, which a fortunate hunter might be able to come across by sheer luck once in his lifetime. Don Juan paused dramatically and looked at me piercingly. He seemed to be waiting for a question, but I didn't have any. What do you think makes them so difficult to find and so unique? I shrugged my shoulders because I didn't know what to say. They have no routines. That's what makes them magical. A deer has to sleep at night. Isn't that a routine? Certainly. If the deer sleeps every night at a specific time and in one specific place. But those magical beings do not behave like that. In fact, someday you may verify this for yourself. Perhaps it'll be your fate to chase one of them for the rest of your life. What do you mean by that? You like hunting. Perhaps someday your path may cross the path of a magical being and you might go after it. A magical being is a sight to behold. I was fortunate enough to cross paths with one. Our encounter took place after I had learned and practiced a great deal of hunting. Once, I was in a forest of thick trees in the mountains of central Mexico, when suddenly I heard this sweet whistle. It was unknown to me. Never in all my years of roaming in the wilderness had I heard such a sound. I could not place it in the terrain. It seemed to come from different places. I thought that perhaps I was surrounded by a herd or a pack of some unknown animals. I heard the tantalizing whistle once more. It seemed to come from everywhere. I realized then my good fortune. I knew it was a magical being, a deer. I also knew that a magical deer is aware of the routines of ordinary men and the routines of hunters. It is very easy to figure out what the average man would do in a situation like that. First of all, his fear would immediately turn him into prey. Once he becomes prey, he has two courses of action left. He either flees or he makes his stand. If he is not armed, he would ordinarily flee into the open field to run for his life. If he is armed, he would get his weapon ready and he would make a stand, either by freezing on the spot or dropping to the ground. A hunter, on the other hand, when he stalks in the wilderness, would never walk into any place without figuring out his points of protection. Therefore, he would immediately take cover. He might drop his poncho on the ground, or he might hang it from a branch as a decoy, and then he would hide and wait until the game makes its next move. So in the presence of the magical deer, I didn't behave like either. I quickly stood on my head and began to wail softly. I actually wept tears and sobbed for such a long time that I was about to faint. Suddenly, I felt a soft breeze. Something was sniffing my hair behind my right ear. I tried to turn my head to see what it was, and I tumbled down and set up just in time to see a radiant creature staring at me, and the deer talked to me. I smiled involuntarily. The idea of a talking deer was quite incredible, to put it mildly. The deer talked? He did. Did he really talk? I asked in a tone of perplexity. Don Juan roared with laughter. Well, what did it say? I asked, half in jest. Don Juan was quiet for a moment, as if he were trying to remember. Then his eyes brightened up as he told me what the deer said. The magical deer said, Hello, friend. And I answered, Hello. Then he asked me, Why are you crying? And I said, Because I'm sad. Then the magical creature came to my ear and said as clearly as I'm speaking now, Don't be sad. I said that his dialogue with the deer had been sort of dumb. What do you expect? He said laughing. I'm an Indian. His sense of humor was so outlandish that all I could do was laugh with him. You don't believe that a magical deer talks, do you? I'm sorry, but I just can't believe things like that can happen. I don't blame you. It's one of the darndest things.